Uh, before I begin, I also want to mention that I know some have been receiving provocative emails uh, that have been circulated throughout the Jewish communities across the country, and a few of you may have gotten them. Uh, they're filled with tall tales and dire warnings about a certain candidate for president, and all I want to say is uh, let me know if you see this guy named Barack Obama because he sounds pretty scary. Uh, but if anybody's been confused by these emails, I want you to know that today I will be speaking from my heart and as a true friend of Israel. My honor to bring to you the 41st president, a great dad, George H.W. Bush. We all know his father, but what about his cousins? Check out this family tree, done with research by Ancestry.com. And I know, and I know that when I visit APAC, I am among friends, good friends. <laughs> friends who share my strong commitment to make sure that the bond between the United States and Israel is unbreakable today, unbreakable tomorrow, unbreakable forever. Our alliance is based on shared interests and shared values. Those who threaten Israel threaten us. Israel has always faced these threats on the front lines, and I will bring to the White House an unshakable commitment to Israel's security. That starts with ensuring Israel's qualitative military advantage. I will ensure that Israel can defend itself from any threat, from Gaza to Tehran. Defense cooperation Defense cooperation between the United States and Israel is a model of success, and it must be deepened. As President, I will implement a Memorandum of Understanding that provides $30 billion in assistance to Israel over the next decade, investments to Israel's security that will not be tied to any other nation. First, we must approve the foreign aid request for 2009, and I understand that Speaker Pelosi and Senator Reid are ready to move on that. Going forward, we can enhance our cooperation on missile defense. We should export military equipment to our ally Israel under the same guidelines as NATO. And I will always stand up for Israel's right to defend itself in the United Nations and around the world. Now, the long road to peace requires Palestinian partners committed to making this journey. We must isolate Hamas unless and until they renounce terrorism, recognize Israel's right to exist, and abide by past agreements. There is no room at the negotiating table for terrorist organizations. That is why I opposed holding elections in 2006 with Hamas on the ballot. Now let me be clear. Israel's security is sacrosanct. It is non-negotiable. The Palestinians need a state the Palestinians need a state that is contiguous and cohesive, and that allows them to prosper. But any agreement with the Palestinian people must preserve Israel's identity as a Jewish state with secure, recognized, defensible borders. And Jerusalem will remain the capital of Israel, and it must remain undivided. Now, there is no greater threat to Israel or to the peace and stability of the region than Iran. This audience is made up of both Republicans and Democrats, and the enemies of Israel should have no doubt that regardless of party, Americans stand shoulder to shoulder in our commitment to Israel's security. So while I don't want to strike too partisan a note here today, I do want to address some willful mischaracterizations of my position. The Iranian regime supports violent extremists and challenges us across the region. It pursues a nuclear capability that could spark a dangerous arms race and raise the prospect of a transfer of nuclear know-how to terrorists. Its president denies the Holocaust and threatens to wipe Israel off the map. The danger from Iran is grave, it is real, and my goal will be to eliminate this threat. Now, Senator McCain 
and others offers a false choice, stay the course in Iraq or cede the region to Iran. I reject this logic because there is a better way. Keeping all of our troops tied down indefinitely in Iraq is not the way to weaken Iran. It is precisely what has strengthened it. It is a policy for staying, not a policy for victory. I have proposed a responsible, phased redeployment of our troops from Iraq. We will get out as carefully as we were careless getting in. We will finally pressure Iraq's leaders to take meaningful responsibility for their own future. We will also use all elements of American power to pressure Iran. I will do everything in my power to prevent Iran from obtaining a nuclear weapon. Everything in my power to prevent Iran from obtaining a nuclear weapon. Everything.